the shared system. It's something a lot of us have shared now. Tony's made it pretty clear that it was never intended to be any kind of flagship or ultimate modular synthesizer, yet it's slowly made its way into our shared idea of what a curated collection of synthesizer modules looks like. I don't want to exaggerate too much, but I think it may have become the best known of all contemporary full modular synths. I know that when I think of modular systems with names, the first name I think of is the shared system. And sure, I have a built-in bias, but I don't think I'm the only one. And as Tony has also said, we feel confident that it'll still be possible to acquire or build yourself even years down the line. So hopefully it will continue to be something people share. If you've been with us the last couple weeks, you may have already seen the first part of Tony's retrospective interview about the shared system. As we mentioned there, there were too many questions to really fit into a single video. So here we present the second part. Thanks so much to everybody who has tuned in, everybody who's used or dreamed about shared systems over the years. And biggest thanks of all to Tony for dreaming it up and making it a reality. I know I'm not done patching on the shared system. I probably never will be. Feel free to share your thoughts or your stories or your patches or music in the comments. Without further ado, here's Tony. Well, again, a shared system is the shared system. So typically, if I were playing a shared system, I would only be playing the shared system. Now, if I was playing modular live, I, I do use other controllers. So I use a push and um, the ES8 so I can generate control voltages, especially the new one with MPE is very interesting to me. And I, I think that that's a, it's a wonderful thing to interface a modular synthesizer to a computer. It can really uh, explode the ideas. But uh, yeah, no, for the shared system, your controllers are the Rene and the pressure points, and of course, your hands. Oh, everything has changed. Everything has changed. The way that the way that I design, which is hard for me to even say, because I don't think there there is no longer an I. It's now we. The way we, as a company, make noise design. Because you know when this when these modules were developed, make noise was very very small. At, at points, it was it was myself, and then at points it was myself and Kelly, and and it wasn't until. Um, I, and Walker, you could correct me, but I, I believe maybe it was the DPO. No, wait, I, I do remember actually. Uh, our, our first employee, Dash Lewis, was after the DPO launch. So the, we, we had announced the DPO and the demand for it was larger than we expected. You know, again, uh, I, I'm still in that mindset at this point. Uh, we're gonna make 100 of these. We're gonna make 200 of these. And, and when I say we're gonna make 100 or 200, I'm, that, that's lifetime. Lifetime. That's you know, like when I made the Woggle Bug, it wasn't we're going to make 100 and then we're going to make another 100 and then we're going to... No, no, no. It was I'm going to make 150 Woggle Bugs. And that's it. Because I had no concept that you could sell more than, than 150 Woggle Bugs. There was never a thought in my mind that you could sell more than 200 DPOs. It was we're going to make 200 DPOs. We're going to make a DPO. Let's order them. We can't order quantities smaller than 100. Let's do 200. That'll give us enough for years. By the time we run out of those, people won't even want a DPO anymore. So, so keep that in mind. The, 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 at that point, yes, it was, I was designing most of these analog modules. And then I started working with Tom Erb. And then there was also, there was the original Phonogene firmware, which is what's in this unit. You know, in, in um, later units, we had a revised Phonogene firmware, but the original Phonogene firmware was done by a fellow named Fleming, who has his own company, Gotherman. And so at that point, I started, those are some of my earliest collaborations. And I think that things just continued to grow from there. And as time progressed, there's, there's more people working at Make Noise. And most of the people who work at Make Noise or who have worked at Make Noise have been very connected to what we do. And because they're very connected to what we do, they, they care a lot and they have a lot of opinions and thoughts and questions and comments, suggestions. And I try to be open to that. I think I'm more open to that now than I was earlier because I've come to realize that there's some value in those things. And so when we develop today, it's no longer, this is how I develop, it's how we develop. And then there's another layer to that uh, because 
when we were developing, or I say when I was developing these modules, there was fewer than 20 companies making Eurorack modules. And nearly any idea that was executed well was well received. Today, you could have an incredible idea and execute it well, and potentially it will still not be well received because there is so much to receive. Eurorack is so large and there are so many different ideas and so many different concepts and so many different, different ways of achieving all those concepts that in order to actually capture people's attention and furthermore their imagination, you can't simply do something well. You have to do something incredibly. That's the only way you can capture people's attention or their imaginations. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to capture people's imaginations mostly. And, and so today, when we develop a module, it's no longer just, oh, I have this idea for something that I would like to build. You know? It's never like that. It's, it's um, I have this idea for something I'd like to build. Let's see who's already done it. <laughs> and a quick search would usually reveal that there has been folks that have done it already. In that case, you have to look at what those folks have done. How well have they done it? Uh, have they, is there some element of this idea that they have not explored? Is there something that we here at Make Noise could do better? And I'll, I'll be honest with you, a lot of times there is not. A lot of times the answer to that question is, well, I don't know, it looks like IntelliJL kind of nailed this. Congrats to them. We'll focus on something else. And, and uh, you know, they, it's just the way things have progressed. So then every once in a while, we do come up with something that no one has done yet. And usually it's something pretty strange, and that's why we're doing things like the spectrophone, um, where it's, it's not that someone hasn't done spectral synthesis well enough, it's just that spectral synthesis is such a strange, herby idea that uh, no one has done it yet. <laughs> and, and so with those ideas, uh, those are also very hard to, uh, to progress. Um, you know, something like the morphogene or the phonogene, when I had that idea originally, the phonogene, Richard Devine and Josh Kay had loaned me the um, uh, Curtis Rhodes book, Microsound. And I was already very interested in tape music, but that book just uh, blew all of that wide open. And the reason I'm talking about phonogene and morphogene in relation to spectrophone is that these are modules for which there is no blueprint. And the beautiful thing about developing an idea for which there is no blueprint is that you are, you are inventing your own path and there, aren't, there are not usually expectations from the end user, from the artists that are gonna purchase and use and create with whatever it is that you're trying to build. And that's a wonderful thing, but it's also scary because you have to invent the entire path. And so with something like Morphogene, Phonogene, Spectrophone, it was scary and it was long because there wasn't just this clear idea of like, well, with a DPO, it's like we have many things we can look at. We can look at Don Buchla's 259. We can look at um, what Dopefer has done with their 110. We can look at what Peter Grenader did with the Plan B Model 15. We have all these resources to look at and we can see what worked, what doesn't work, how we want to modify these ideas and sculpt them into something that's our own. Something like the phonogene or morphogene, there's nothing to compare to it. So we had to create that path on our own. And that took a long time. It's very hard, very scary, and there's, there's a lot of, uh, of times where you feel like it's just not gonna come together ever. The shared system was a concept of its moment, and its moment was 2011. <laughs> and things were very different in the world, and very different in electronic music, and especially very different in uh, modular synthesis. And at the time, it seemed like this incredibly forward-thinking idea, and it seemed really fun and exciting and dangerous even. And um, like I said, it was never thought of as, as a product or, or something that people could get for themselves. It was thought of as an experiment, a challenge to these five artists. And I really think that that time has passed. I think we've made them for uh, quite a while now, and many folks have had a chance at that challenge, that same challenge those original five artists had. And I feel confident that there are enough shared systems in all their variations. I feel like there's enough shared systems in the world that if in 10 years somebody, somebody wanted 
a shared system, I'm sure they could chase one down. So I don't, uh, I don't know how else to put it, but I think these will be our last shared systems. There will not be a shared system too. Some folks have asked, since we have this new case, will there be a shared system too in the new case? Uh, no, we'll come up with something fresh and new. There have been some folks who thought that the final shared systems were in uh, the new case and they are not. And the reason for that is they don't need to be. One thing that's kind of wonderful about this collection of modules is they don't require a lot of current. And so the current power supply that's in here is more than enough to supply this arrangement of modules. Now I know you have a couple of blanks in here. Uh, it looks like uh, you could fit two HP at the top and maybe six HP at the bottom. I think even if you found the most power hungry two and six HP modules out on the market, it's still gonna be fine in here. The new case is quite over-engineered for this collection of modules. And it's, uh, it's engineered for the future uh, here at Make Noise and Eurorack, really. And as time progresses, people want more and more powerful signal processing. They want um, more and more uh, powerful sound generation. They want more depth, not physical depth, but depth of feature set. And most of all, they want more digital. And digital requires more current. And so that's why the new power supply, the four zone bus board, is uh, so much more uh, robust and so much more over-engineered than the original power supply. Times have changed. This original power supply is, is great for this collection of modules. Um, as time progresses, it's harder and harder to support some of the new modules on that old power supply. And that's just how things go. Things progress. <laughs> Hopefully, because Vactrol just got more expensive. I was uh, just yesterday in our uh, weekly meeting with the general manager, I was informed that our Vactrol uh, has just increased in price by, I think, another... <laughs> Give you an idea when i did the quad multiple gate because it used so many vactrols we were only doing i was only going to do 65 of them um, but it, you know there's eight vactrols per unit and um, in order to do the entire run i had to make a minimum buy of a thousand vactrols um, and i got a pretty good price um, before shipping and taxes but a piece today uh, i was just informed that we are paying it's a piece for back trolls. When we first announced the black and gold shared system at the NAMM show, and I believe you were with us for that, right, Walker? So you might remember some of these things. A few interesting things happened when we did the full black and gold shared system. Now, this is before the morphogene, so it had a phonogene here. It did have the herb verb echophone, of course. It did not have the Rene 2. So it had Rene 1, there was no Tempe. So it was Rene 1 and no Tempe. And it was, uh, it was the first fully black and gold system that we made. And uh, two things happened when we showed it at that NAMM show. And I, I can't remember the year, I'm sure it Walker. Was 2015. 2015 it was. So the first thing that happened was, and you gotta keep in mind at this point, no other companies did black and gold or even these um, black PCB based uh, face plates and certainly not these activity windows that we do. So, and, and I, I guess I guess we weren't really even doing those at that point. That was, I think the following year or did we already- We had the Wogglebug. The Wogglebug. So Wogglebug uh, must be the first module that had the activity windows yeah, as we guess, call them. Yeah. And um, <laughs> it was fun because uh, when I showed it, every dealer said, please do not offer the black and gold modules separate only offer them in the system, please. And the reason is they did not want to have to stock two versions of all these modules. They said, we don't want to have to stock a, a silver maths and a black maths. It's too much. And I understood, I mean, it, it made sense. You know, their idea was that what would happen is somebody would order a black maths and inevitably they would only have silver maths in stock or vice versa. And, and so we, you know, we, we consented to that. We said, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll only sell the black and gold modules in systems. Uh, so that, that's the first interesting thing that happened. The next uh, interesting thing that happens is 
many, many uh, of my fellow manufacturers started coming to me asking, well, how do you do, how are you doing this uh, activity window? They didn't know that was a name for it. They were just talking about, how are you doing these graphics that light up on your panels? And the CV bus and the Wagga bug, those are the main ones where you could see it at this point. And at that, at that point, I, I, I wasn't telling anyone because I wanted it to be our look and I wanted it to be something that was uh, unique to make noise. And it was for many years. And then I think some folks figured it out. And now you see it all over your Iraq. You see black, gold, white, and the uh, illuminated front panels. It's become very common in uh, the world of Eurorack. And I think that it's, uh, it's interesting. You know, something else that people probably don't know is that when we were shipping the original shared systems, we would usually include uh, one of the original records. And um, that went until we ran out of the original records. With the covers, uh, Kelly actually printed all of those covers. She uh, printed them by hand with a letter press. It took quite a while. Additionally, she printed them on this vellum that she had to cut by hand. So, and so I think that's another reason why we had a very limited number of the records. We weren't going to repress them because it was so much work to make the initial quantities that it just seemed like it seemed almost impossible to find a time to make another run of those records. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, all of those five records sound different than I would have expected them to. Especially, I would say, um, Richard's record. <laughs> well, well, especially Richard's record, Alessandro's record. Keith, I mean, th I'm listing all five names eventually. So really, that was kind of the beauty of doing that record series was we got to have that moment of clarity where we felt like, wow, we really are doing something good because we created an instrument where the artist can um, express themselves through it. The artist sounds like the artist, as opposed to the artist sounds like the shared system. And that was the goal to prove that point. And um, it's possible that we would have gotten also five records that all sounded the same. I mean, that could have happened. And thankfully we didn't. So I think we worked hard to tr try to create an instrument that would allow for that level of expression, but that doesn't mean we knew we achieved it. So I think the shared system series kind of helped us to prove that, wow, we are moving in a good direction.
Yeah.